Hello and welcome back to the Three Pillars Podcast. I'm your host, Chase Tobin, a.k.a. Tobinator the Motivator, and this is episode 100, Healthy Intimacy. Guys, welcome back to the Three Pillars Podcast, the podcast where we focus on those three pillars of fitness, spiritual, mental, and physical fitness, to grow ourselves closer to the Lord on this journey we call life. Guys, this is an awesome episode. It's a milestone in the podcast. I've got my wife, Leah, on today. We're going to be talking about a topic that is probably on the forefront of everybody's mind, but we're going to try to keep it as as wholesome as possible. If you're a returning listener or a viewer, thank you for being here. Thank you for all your support. Thank you for everything you've done for this podcast. It's been awesome this past 100 episodes. If you're brand new to the podcast, welcome to Thunderdome. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be a good time. So, uh, if you guys have been tracking, uh, check out the Three Pillars Podcast website, Three Pillars Podcast at WordPress.com. A lot of motivational quotes, uh, workout videos, blog posts, all kinds of good stuff over there. It's going to be everything Three Pillars right there. Uh, check out Good Pods. Check out Three Pillars Podcast on Good Pods. Good Pods is an app where we can discover each other, discover podcasts that you've probably never even heard of before uh, for podcasts like this that are kind of small. Uh, it's kind of like Goodreads if you guys have ever checked that out. Uh, it's a good time. So check us out on Good Pods. And, uh, we're, I think we're number two on the charts right now. So I appreciate you guys support, uh, every single week. So without further ado, we're going to kick this off with a quick word of prayer. And then I'm going to introduce Leah and we're going to talk about some stuff that, uh, you guys will really enjoy. So let us pray. Heavenly father, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. We just Thank you for being our guide in this life. Thank you for bringing us together as husband and wife for all eternity, Lord. Lord, I ask that you bless the marriage that I have been in with my wife. Uh, Keep us strong. Keep us dedicated to you. Keep us faithful to you and to each other all the days of our life. Lord, I ask that anybody tuning into this, just bless them abundantly. Give Lee and I tonight the words to say. Give anybody listening the Eyes to hear, ears to, uh, eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to receive anything that grows them closer to you. Lord, I ask this in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. All right, guys. Without further ado, Leah, are you are you here? Can you hear me? <laughs> Mic check. Yeah. Welcome, one two one two. Welcome back. Uh, I'm, welcome uh, back. It's good to you know, be here. It's not like we don't live together or anything like that. But I haven't seen you in forever. <laughs> it's been about ten minutes, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. First and foremost, I love you. Thank you for being on the podcast. Um, Love you too. The last episode was a hit, episode 75. You guys didn't check it out. Uh, it was episode 75, Marriage and Family. We did it just before Christmas, I think. It, it did well. I didn't it did it. very well. It's like number two on the whole podcast right now. Oh, no, really? Yeah. Yeah, it really is. We're, we're crushing it over there. So uh, I couldn't think of anybody better to have back for the 100th episode. You've done uh, 100 episodes. Yeah, you've liked them all, <laughs> whether you know it or not. <laughs> I can't believe that consistency i mean i can it's we we try to do it every week yep. and you're 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 the reason uh i have most of my content because you're like hey you should talk about this in a podcast and i just throw it on and you're like hey i talked about I'm that like, wait a minute that was what that was my idea yeah <laughs> and i'm like well yeah you told me to do it so i i, I do it so for the record guys uh Flattering. leah gives me a lot of content and um so that's just you know the, the the she's the brains behind this whole operation if you guys didn't know so tonight Today, this afternoon, this morning, this evening, wherever you're listening to this, uh, we are going to talk about healthy intimacy. Um, I'm going to go ahead and preface this. If you guys are parents, if your kids listen to this show, I would listen to this first before you allow them to listen to it. Um, Not because it's going to be vulgar or explicit or uh, erotic or anything like that, but we're going to talk about some things that you guys should probably talk about between your family first but this is for the couples out there the the, uh, husbands and wives out there who just want to grow closer to the Lord but also not feel bad about being intimate with one another so that's kind of the whole theme behind this podcast so I'll give you a second to pause and then continue on in just a minute because uh, this is an adult conversation for adults Uh, if there are kids listening talk to your parents before you finish the rest of this episode Period. So, healthy intimacy. Hun, if I could ask you uh, to give a layman's definition of healthy intimacy, what would you what would you say? Well, I mean, intimacy to me 
I think sometimes can be a multifaceted thing. I don't think it's just, you know, how sexually active you are in your marriage, but um, how how well you listen to one another, how pr- not not even that, but how present you are with one another. Um, are you intentional in the time that you spend with one another? Are you are you both? intentionally trying to do things uh to out love one another i think i heard that put you know uh, i think we went to a marriage um expo once and they said Mm -hmm. you know this week's challenge try to out love one another and you know to me i think it's uh it's uh, it, it, it it is a mutual effort it's something that regardless of where you are in your marriage whether you're newlyweds or been married for 50 years there's always ways to improve one's intimacy and i guess you can be as creative as you want with it you know, I like the little notes that um, that you leave me in the morning, or the text messages that you sent me. Or if I have I have my time every morning. That even though Chase is gone for work, I have to call him on his way into on his way into work. Excuse me. <clears throat> and he told me that, and it's not even like like it's a clingy thing. <laughs> no, it's not. No. It's it's more of. I, I just wake up, I'm up early, I have my coffee or tea, um, I've had my Bible time, and then... I'm usually on the road by the usually, time you're, you're doing that, too. Yeah, so. and the kids are still asleep, and I just call them up, and I'm like, hello. And then we just kind of say what's, you know, hey, I had a crazy dream last night, or, yeah. you know, what, what our plans are for that day, and because we don't, you know, he's out so early, we don't, we don't get to spend as much time as I would like in the mornings uh, together, but I think that'll change. It's, it's getting better of late. I've, I've been working from home a little bit more, but it's it's more of a, um, it's just our, our thing that we do. And it's not like, I like to think we're still in the honeymoon phase, even though we've been married, uh, it'll be nine years this year. Mm-hmm. Um, we haven't lost that spark. And part of it is because of the things we're going to talk about on the episode today. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I appreciate your definition kind of bringing it did, my, did it come to full circle there? Did I, I think it did. I think you, you want I think to add it anything did. to that? I think it's just more of, you know, we're, we're going to talk about emotional stuff and physical intimacy today. Um, I think you're right in the sense that it's not just a physical um, part of a healthy uh, sexual relationship is being involved with your mind as well as your body. So mm-hmm. the mind-body connection between two mm-hmm. uh, two partners is, is huge. Um, so that's what we'll get into today. I'm going to start by going back to what Father Wallace is the, the priest that yeah. helped guide us through our Shout out to Father Wallace. Yeah, our marriage uh, sacrament when we first got married. He, when we first met him, he told us straight up he wouldn't marry us, even though we were already married in the courthouse. Well, first of all, you have to say it the way he did. If you just came to me. Oh, yeah, he was straight off the boat Irish. If you just came to me. A year given, ago, given the circumstances, given the circumstances, I wouldn't have married you. I would have told you as no. Yeah, <laughs> I would have said I wait. Did. I would have said wait. Take some time to get to know each other, because yeah. clearly you broke the rules. Yeah, and we just kind of sat there. We knew he was right. <laughs> yeah, he spoke to us in a way that was. I think I said this in the last uh, podcast. It was very fatherly yet very loving. Remember, he just came in the room and slapped that folder on the table, and we were just like, "What Whoa. is that?" It was like you knew everything about us before. Yeah, that's what know. I felt. I was like, oh, my gosh. It's almost an interrogation. But it was at the same time, it was very gut-checking mm-hmm. and something that was like, okay, so what are we actually getting into, Father? Talk to me. And so he uh, he made the connection that if, if you've ever been to any uh, – if, if anybody's Italian or married to an Italian, every time you go into a bedroom, you always see a crucifix and white linen, right? Mm-hmm. Where else do you see a crucifix and, and white linen? The altar. The altar. Because he, he he pointed that out, and then he points to the crucifix that was in the room at the time. He says, behold, the perfect lover. Mm-hmm. Jesus is is the is the bridegroom, and the church is the bride. The perfect lover, what he did for us on the cross, the ultimate act of love, It was. it's a very intimate thing. It is consummated. It was what, what Jesus said when he died. He didn't say it is finished. He said it is consummated, if you if you actually translate it. it. means it is signed, sealed, and delivered what happened between the spiritual and the physical realm was so intimately connected in that moment in time. Mm-hmm. The veil of the church broke or ripped in half. There was earthquake. There was, there was 
there was an eclipse mm -hmm. all at like around the same time because of how powerful that act is. And that's what we're to emulate every single day if we're going to be intimate with one another. Mm -hmm. You have to be on that kind of level when you are intimate with each other. It's not just a physical, primal, you know, reptilian brain thing. There's so many levels to it. And this is why it is so important that when you are married or when you're dating or you commit yourself to one person because if you start giving your intimacy and you, this this power that you have to other people it's going to it's going to diminish what it's really supposed to be does that make sense yeah and i was i've actually heard it but there's no true i mean there's even talking about intimacy there's no true intimacy with god without prayer Right. That's that's the tool right there. I don't and and again, I mean, and, and this I don't think I have to tell anybody that's listening this. You don't truly love somebody else until you first love God. Right. Period. You know, period. <laughs> period. Yeah, like that. That's full full stop in that regard. So it's it's so important that you first have a relationship with with God, and that bleeds into your your marriage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. God created man and woman. He said, be fruitful. And he said, multiply. Mm -hmm. So that is the, like, that was the first commandment given before any, really anything else was, was told uh, to humanity. You know, Adam was around. He was naming animals and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. when Eve was created, their per, pretty much first charge was to be fruitful and multiply. multiply. Mm -hmm. Be fruitful in the sense that the children you produce, you need to teach them be intentional with them, uh, further the kingdom with them, and then multiply your kingdom by what we do, uh, you know, in the bedroom, as it were. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what we're going to get into. I know it's been kind of a long, drawn-out intro, but um, we got a couple points we're going to get into. Why it's important to have a uh, healthy um, sexual relations, and th and from a biblical standpoint. And right. again, we're not going to get into the, the 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 physics of it all right but why it's important to be with each other um mm -hmm. as male as as husband and wife mm -hmm. you good with that yeah all right let's i think yeah even sexual intimacy i mean that's almost like a subcomponent of right intimacy right in in a marriage you know intellectual emotional spiritual yep um, physical, you know, that, like I said in the beginning, I mean, it's, it's, it's so multifaceted, but, right. and we're going to hit um, some of those facets. So let's just jump into it. Cause we, we got a short amount of time. We're gonna make it happen. So, well, you talk faster than I do. I, I do. So. I do. Go ahead. So, I, I drink lots of coffee. I'm highly <laughs> caffeinated all day long. So let's, let's do this. So your emotional connection. So regular sexual activity, I've got a little outline here, uh, can strengthen the emotional bond between partners. Intimacy and physical closeness can promote feelings of love connection and overall relationship satisfaction so when you are with your husband and wife husband or wife um that emotional bond and closeness you you just it's it's, it's literally a physical connection mm -hmm. but it's also an emotional connection because you are one with that person what are your thoughts on that well i mean you're you know i think for me you know sharing thoughts with you and feelings, you know, that just really does kind of help, I guess, you know, knowing that you're, because Chase is a very active listener, and he and I, I don't know if he, he may have mentioned this on the podcast before, he courted me for seven years before we, um, yeah, Leah's got a testimony, so, but, uh, <laughs> that's, before, another that's another episode, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, I, the fact, I think what really drew me to him was the fact that he was such an active listener, and there was just so much depth to him. I could share, you know, sharing my ideas or thoughts or dreams or things that I'd had to him. And knowing that he's not, even if some of them sounded crazy or outlandish or he didn't, you know, if he thought something was stupid or whatever. But he also does challenge my thought process with things. But in a way that, um, I guess, you know, I, I need, but it, it's, it's just always been well received. And, um, and yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd say that. You know, for for me, that uh, I'm I'm very pleased with that uh, area of our marriage when it comes to communication and, um, you know, I, I I think sharing the deepest depths of my heart, you know, with you and feeling like, 
you know, you're not going to just run and tell your friends or someone in, right. you know, your it's mother the, the, the or thing, my mother things, or, you know, the things, the things that us. happen yeah. between us and our marriage. I've, I've been this way since the beginning of our marriage. When it comes to our marriage, I do not and I will not, and I'm very careful with who I talk to about things, especially when it comes to my marriage. Yeah. I've always been that way. What goes on between he, between he and I, number one, especially if there's an issue with something, over the years, I've learned I must go to God first yeah. before I start. Oh my gosh, I got to call my girlfriend. Oh my gosh, I got to. I, I need to meet my neighbor. I need. I really need to. You know. Oh my god, I need to talk to Mom all real quick. Where's she at? Yeah. But I don't feel like I can't. Number one, I all like again. I go to the Lord first, but I'm. We are in a place where I can go to you. Yeah. And say, look, this is this is really where we need to talk. And I've also learned that and. You know, Dr. Ellen taught me this. She said, Leah, when it comes to men, especially, less criticism and more praise. And she was, she was actually, it was in a discussion about how our, our, um, uh, what you say, personalities just kind of mm-hmm. differ. She mm-hmm. said, Chase is the kind of person where if the two of you were to go fishing, he would cast his line in the water and he would wait and he would wait and he would wait. She said, you, on the other hand, you're going to cast that line. This was how many, five years ago now. Yep, yep. She said, and you're going to bob, and you're going to bob, and you're going to reel it in, and you're going to cast again. And you're going to bob, and you're going to reel it in, you're going to cast again. She goes, and I'm going to tell you, Chase is going to be the first one to catch that fish because he trusts. And I come from a different neck of the woods where I'm just so much more fast-paced. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that was, yeah. you know, but, um, but again, that was a very wise piece of advice that she had given me. She said, when you approach him, Less criticism and more praise. And I knew exactly what she was saying, and I've really tried my hardest to put that into practice. And if I feel like I've come across too hard or too emotional, or too, you know, I always try to, re, you know, come back around and say, look, I, I'm sorry, you know. And Chase is a very forgiving man, but when I'm wrong, he's going to tell me. And I, <laughs> you know, or, or, you know, dare I say, check me. So. Well, that's that's the whole dynamic of marriage. It's not it's it's construct it's constructive criticism. It's um, not being afraid to again say what's on your mind. You're not walking on eggshells when you have this deep emotional connection because you are regularly uh, together in a physical, spiritual, mental sense. You can confide in one another. These things you can communicate better, mm-hmm. and that helps beyond anything I can I can talk about guys you have to be able to communicate with your your spouse your girlfriend whoever mm-hmm. that's and ladies that's, you need to pray on becoming yeah. better listeners that's we all can we all can husbands Slow to wives speak. everybody quick to listen that's why you got that's why you got two ears and one mouth right mm-hmm. so you can listen um so that emotional connection is is it's essential and that's and that's part of that's what happens when you become when you are close and you give yourself to just that one person because if you're giving yourself to several people there's no way you can possibly truly connect because you've given your you've spread yourself too thin no cuz that takes so the, it, i think it true it really does take time it does it, it does takes but that time. but, but the, the 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 point i'm trying to make is stop with the this this hookup culture we've got right now I was a victim of it. You were a victim of it. It was perpetuated for whatever reason. It's not the way it's supposed to be because it degrades you. It degrades your 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 mind, your body, and your soul because you are spread so thin and you're focused on the wrong things. Yep. Whereas if you give yourself to one person, you can focus and be more intentional and be with that person. Mm-hmm. To fulfill yeah. all their needs, not try to fulfill everybody's needs because you can't do that. You're not. You don't have that kind of capacity yeah and it's just a damaging lifestyle it in is. general it it's is. That there's nothing you know emotionally physically spiritually i mean yeah so not, not the way to go not the way to go second point i think we're good on that emotional second point stress reduction we can speed these through because it's i mean we've we've talked about a lot of good stuff but mm-hmm. uh stress reduction so it, when you engage in sexual activity with your partner it releases endorphins and promotes relaxation, which can help reduce stress levels. It serves as a natural way to unwind and experience pleasure, leading to an, an increased overall well-being. Mm-hmm. So a couple points on that. Wait, the, can, do you think that that's just in the act itself? Or, I mean, 
healthy touch and hugging and kissing. Yeah, and I think I think hands. like PDA, like being with each yeah. other and not being afraid to just you know w- within reason. Use prudence, right? You're not mm-hmm. gonna like yeah, I'm at a funeral and you're you, we're gonna be making out in the corner. Like don't do that, right? But if you're out in public and you're just holding hands and hugging and just displaying that 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 mm-hmm. affection to your children and they mm-hmm. see that they know that that's a healthy thing to do mm-hmm. and it release in any of that releases oxytocin yeah which is the love hormone mm-hmm. so the love hormone is is a phenomenal hormone it's 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 masked when it's when you're involved in pornography or masturbation or things like that it's a it's a masked form of that there's a different hormone that's released i can't remember what the name of it is yeah but it is it is a different chemical it's a different chemical in the brain but when you're actually with somebody, your your partner, that is released during the, the physical act of intercourse. Mm-hmm. So females and males differ in the sense that when oxytocin is, is released, it is a stress relief. It is a release from the world. But coming down from that, men and women are different. Mm-hmm. M- women want to be all cuddly and clingy and this is a wonderful thing. It's been great. Sometimes dudes have to kind of go caveman mode. <laughs> and like, cause, cause you, you, you've, in, you've increased your stress levels, but it's a good stress. You're not in distress, you're in use stress. You're, it was a great thing, this just happened, it's been awesome. But to bring yourself back down a minute, sometimes dudes it, and ladies just be cognizant of this. If a dude has to like take a minute, walk away, sit for a second, pass out, snore, whatever, that's, that's what I call caveman mode, <laughs> right? And you have to, and it's not, it's not a dig on the ladies. You just, we had a great time. It's awesome. But that's how guys de-stress sometimes. So if, if, if you're, <laughs> gents, don't feel bad about not just cuddling immediately afterwards because you have to bring your, your stress, even though it's a positive stress, you have to bring it back down because you've got this, this flux of oxytocin in your system you have to bring it back down. So it does, the whole act itself brings your stress level down, but it can mm-hmm. throw you out of balance just a little bit. And you have to, mm-hmm. each, each partner has their way of like bringing it back to balance, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're already out of whack to begin with, I mean, especially, you know, getting on the subject, cause there's, gosh, well, I'm just so, I'm, I'm tired. I don't want to do it. He wants it or I don't, you know, and you know, I'm, I'm 33 and I can't, I mean, I don't, you know, feel like I'm old or anything, but I mean, I've talked to so many girls, you know, maybe plus or minus, you know, five years. I am just so uninterested. I don't want to do it. I'm tired. I have, you know, it's just, you know, what's wrong? What can I take? Cause, um, you know, Chase and I are big into health and fitness and, you know, we share somewhat of a holistic mindset when it comes to, um, you know, the way we eat, the way we drink overall health. Um, Yeah. And, you know, I have good friends that are, you know, holistic MDs or naturopaths or chiropractors, you know, the list goes on and on. But, uh, I'm sorry, we're outside. Those are the chickens. If you (laughs) picked up, yeah. But, um, you know, and and I will say that one of the common things that most of these women shared, uh, one, one of the things they all shared in common was that they were all overweight. Yeah. And, and I would tell them, no, I don't, uh, well, number one, there, yes, there, I'm sure, yeah, there are some things you, you could do to, but first and foremost, if you just increase the blood flow to your reproductive organs, yep. you might get the engine revving a little bit there. <laughs> you know, it doesn't take much before you start spending money and just, you know, uh, you know, overloading your system on a bunch of stuff. Because yep. I know there's, I've seen the commercials on the products and this and that before yep. you even do that. Check your may, diet. May be get Check your, your diet sleep. Or just and, and how active your stress are you? levels. I mean, and too. I mean, and managing your stress too, because that will impact someone. I mean, I know yeah. that when when there's a lot going, and you're just so uninterested. Right. But you know, it's uh, that that's something that you know, um, it, it, it's it is. I mean, I think that you you owe it to yourselves and to your spouse to take care of each other, and and meet each other's needs. Um, you know, when it comes to um your your sexual intimacy no that's 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 huge and a lot of times people's libido drops because they're sedentary and that gets into i'm glad you did that because that's a segue into point number three see what you did there yeah 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 it's like you read the read the outline uh uh, number three is physical health so and we're kind of shooting from the hip but it's working out great so far so uh 
physical health, my little blurb on physical health. So sexual activity can have a have positive effects on physical health. It can provide a cardio, cardiovascular workout, increase blood circulation, and potentially contribute to better immune function. Regular sexual activity may also help to maintain hormonal balance. So part of getting into that, just getting back to what you said, is by being active, taking a walk, going to the gym, swimming, whatever it is to get that blood flow to your extremities mm-hmm. and to your, again, to your reproductive organs, that's going to keep your libido up mm-hmm. well into your, you know, golden years, mm-hmm. I think. If you stay, I think if I've, you I've stay talked active. to some old people that are pretty happy. Yeah, they're, so. they're, 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 they're not sad. They take care way. of themselves. You know, and they're because, very healthy people. Because they, they practice a lot of this stuff. So being intimate with your partner, again, it can be a workout. You know, if you, if you, you know, it's not saying you have to, you're not, you're not like, <laughs> you're not like, you know, deadlifted 500 pounds in a bedroom, right? But it is, it is. It, oh my gosh. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, obviously, <laughs> right? <laughs> but you're, you're, you're getting a, you're getting physical activity. Uh, if you Getting the heart rate up. Getting your heart rate up, having a good time, getting those good hormones flowing in your system, getting the blood flowing to places it might not have been in a while, right? Yeah. Um, if you, outside the bedroom keep yourself active and healthy it's not going to be so foreign to you yeah right when you're when the blood starts flowing to your all your extremities and you get you know with your partner um it's not going to be foreign because you you're used to having the blood flowing the your heart rate up and then you're not exhausted because of you know what i mean like i, I think it's yeah. um your your physical health plays a huge role in this because it's it's a very physical act, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and too, I mean, it's, I've had three children and I mean, I know, I mean, I don't, I'm sure every mom out there listening would understand this. Your body changes after kids. And, you know, it's one of those things that, it, you know, maybe you didn't work out quite as much while you were pregnant. You packed on a few pounds. You're struggling to lose it. You feel like your belly, maybe you got some stretch marks, this or that growing together in intimacy it, it really it, it is I mean a lot of those insecurities they 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 for me they they kind of just sort of melted away because I kept myself physically active um the changes to my body were to bring life into this world and you know it it um I'm not I'm not trying to look like I did when I was you know 17 18 19 years old you know like but I I do I do like to look good for my husband. So my body composition has changed, but I feel stronger. I feel healthier. I feel, um, you know, like I have more energy. And I do these things with, with um, you know, with my husband in mind. And it, uh, you know, I guess people would say, oh, well, you're, you know, you're just being vain. Well, I, I do. I want, I want to, I mean, you could call it whatever you want, but let's just be real. I like to look good you know, for my husband. So, well, and, and if you get biblically speaking, like they say, your body's a temple, you have to take care of it. You need to put the right, right things into it physically. Yeah, somebody's going to jump on that with yeah. what I said just there yeah, saying, well, Oh, well, you got to do everything for the Lord first. Yeah. Well, you do. But right. if, 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 right. if I'm doing my job as your husband, right. Doing, try to follow the Lord, follow his example, follow his commandments. I'm going to keep myself physically fit to be able to, uh, keep you attracted and interested in me so we can do that commandment, be fruitful and multiply, right? Mm-hmm. If I'm a frumpy dude sitting on a beanbag chair eating Cheetos and I'm like 300 pounds, you're going to be like, ugh, gross, period. This is not fat shaming. This is the truth. It's you got to There's stay. nothing healthy about that, There's though. nothing that's, healthy that's about that. That's the culture yeah. that we're in right now. Is, just, oh, it's beautiful. Just be lazy. Oh, it's, yeah, you no. know, this is that. No, there's nothing healthy or beautiful I'm not taking anything away from someone's from someone's spirit or their heart. Right. It's we're talking about healthy right now. Right. Is it is that going to be good for you in the long run? Because no. if I see that, I mean, you're at more at risk for you know diabetes and heart disease yeah. and cancers. There's there's nothing beautiful. I've about said any that on, I've words. said that on this podcast before. It's like if you've got somebody who's a little bit overweight and you love them, they're funny, they're a good-hearted spirit. I want to keep them around as long as possible. So how can I help? Let's go them? for a walk every day yeah. for thirty minutes. How can I help you be as healthy as possible so I can keep you around yeah, you and keep to, that great you don't kind have to spirit? Beat them over. Up, no, you know? I'm not trying to beat them over the head with a barbell. I want them to 
to or, or shove a salad down their throat. I want them to be here you, longer. You're supposed to be the example. You're right. supposed to be the light. You know right. what I mean? And maybe through your example, they'll find some motivation or encouragement, you know, but like in social media, like a lot of people will look at the pictures of someone who, oh gosh, this guy or this girl's just in such good shape. Right. You either, you know, take from them their good uh, habits and ideas and then apply that to your own life or you just kind of sit in the corner. You could, you know what I mean? Be the victim. Right. Oh, that'll never happen to me. And then feel worse about yourself. So, you know, I, I mean, if I see someone like, I mean, I've you know, I've been seeing a lot on YouTube or the, the videos of people that are like organizing things, the moms that, you know, yeah. and they're, and I'm like, that's actually, it's, they're, they're pretty satisfying to watch. Some of them right. are like insane, but you know, I'm like, Oh, you know, like, I mean, it's cause we're always in the kitchen, but I'm like, you know what? That'd be a really yeah, fun thing sense. to do. Make the fridge like, yeah. you know, the place to start. Yeah. But, um, well, what you, what you were saying gets into a lot of body positivity, self-esteem, mm-hmm. um, which is another point on our chart. Uh, it's like, you read it again. You, you're, you're, we're just talking, but it's like, you know, we're still going along with what we've got going on. Oh, am I really like talking? You're like, like you're, this? yeah. I don't think you actually read the outline. I think we're just, no, I didn't. We're just I kinda, looked at it. We're kind of hitting these things <laughs> as they come along. One, I, one, I glanced at this, it. A this couple point times. is, is like, actually oh, self esteem. So when when you so we're going to get into that. Engaging in sexual activity with your partner can boost self esteem and body image. The intimacy and vulnerability shared during sexual encounters can promote feelings of acceptance, desirability, and confidence. Yeah. So being with your partner, it's it, it it's almost like it's giving you a purpose. It's giving you something to strive for. Not that sex is the only thing in, in a marriage mm-hmm. that you need to deal with, but coming home after a long day, I've been stressed out, or I'm just it's I'm, I'm having a great day. Yeah, and you know, I close a, a, a solid deal at work. It's like, yeah, hunt where are you at? You know what I mean? It's it it it's good to know that you can come home to somebody who enjoys being with you. Not again, not just sexually, but period yeah you know, but I but, think it's the whole thing too like you and I have our routine you come home we do a little auntie bossed you know we we kind of have like that how was your day thing you know it's it's always in the kitchen well yeah because well, it's cause, always in the well, kitchen because you, 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 you either kick me out of the kitchen or welcome me in you kick the kids out right so it's like, yeah our, but that's like it's yeah. our meeting place the yeah. second you come home and we always have like a little snack together yeah. we have we have like grown into these like these habits together where yeah. like uh, you know on the weekends we do our thing and um but i genuinely i like to hang out with you i like to hang out you're, with you you're it's, you're a good time i like to think i'm a fun fun guy yeah you eat a not, lot. not a mushroom i'm a fun guy yeah, get, you it? Eat a lot. get it and get it not I'm a mushroom a fun guy. <laughs> god i'm so funny uh, all right oh my gosh we're gonna we're gonna we got a, a few more and then we'll we'll wrap it up um but no that's that's huge is is your your self-esteem your confidence level when you can walk out of the house knowing that you know what my husband generally loves me mm-hmm. he's given me what I need he's fulfilling my needs I don't have to worry about it I don't have to worry about if he's out of town is he going to be doing something nefarious you know because he's out of town things things of that nature yeah uh, I don't have to worry about when I'm person. gone out of town that nobody's going to show up and and come into my house and take care of business that I should be taking care of. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, at this day and age with ring cameras, I mean. Well, yeah, I can see stuff, but you, know, <laughs> you, can, you can let the battery run out too, right? But but you get what I'm saying? There's a lot of a lot of couples that have these problems. I'm so blessed and fortunate to not have that. Well, it, it comes from your relate Again, you can't love anyone until you first love God. Right. And because right. of your relationship with Christ and my, re- you know what I mean? That's just, I can't, I don't think I'd be able to function. I would never be present in anything I had to do if I had, oh my gosh, is what's he doing? He's out of town. Right. Or if I'm the one, you know, messing around and I have to just constantly cover up lies. You're playing Mission Impossible that's, all the that's, time. I mean, reason. that'll age you. I can't, yeah. I mean, I'd have gray hair, like. Trying to keep up with that. That would be. Trying to uh, just, you know. So thank you for loving me. Yeah. Uh, for all eternity. So that's, that's, I can't thank you enough. Mm-hmm. Um. One point I want to hit real quick before we get into the last point. Uh, improve sleep. <laughs> What's Se- that? Improve sleep. Sexual intimacy can aid in promoting better sleep quali- quality. We talked about oxytocin earlier. The release of oxytocin, also known as the love hormone, during sexual activity can induce feelings of relaxation and help individuals achieve a more restful sleep. So after you get out of caveman mode, guys... Go pass out. It's okay. <laughs> Ladies, I know that you're probably like, oh, hon, that was so great. Like, how, what do you, 
Oh, he's asleep. Well, that's yeah. just what dudes do. It's not a dig on you or anything like that, but that's just how we handle things because we're so so relaxed if you if you do it right. Like, um, get get away from the, the pornography and stuff like that and all the things that happen there, but that's not realistic at all, and it's rotting for your brain. But being able to relax at the end of the day, in the middle of the night, first thing in the morning, whatever it is, that's – part of it is your improved sleep cycle so that's what all i'm going to say on that do you have any uh, any extra things for that i don't know <laughs> I, I know like, i have you've probably caught me snoring a couple of times but <laughs> it's still talking to you it's you hey know, so oh how was your like, day oh, you're not gonna believe oh, this done. i mean do what you know so what do we want to put in the garden this year i really think i want to get these kind of tomatoes all right yeah i mean it's, and it's three two one all right see you uh, tomorrow what, what, would you would you marry a bear like this guy's passed out <laughs> Oh, my gosh. It's too much. Uh, all right. So to, to wrap up, the last thing, and you sort of hit on it a minute ago without reading the, uh, the outline. Uh, relationship satisfaction. Regular sexual activity can contribute to greater relationship satisfaction and overall happiness. It fosters intimacy, deepens the connection between partners, and can lead to increased feelings of closeness and fulfillment within the relationship. Yeah. Just... The, the fact that you have somebody who loves you so deeply that you can come and you can give yourself to fully. Because when you, guys, when you give yourself to a lady and ladies, when you receive your, your man, that is, you become, you truly become one flesh. You truly become together as one unit as prescribed by the Lord. And it's, it's a beautiful thing. And when you are only given to each other, with the Lord in the middle of it, do you you increase your intimacy level, you increase your level of satisfaction with that relationship. Um, I I can't even put it into words, but it it brings you on such a close, intimate level that you should ne- no. There's no way anybody else can 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 come in between. They shouldn't be a way to to wedge that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right. You know, and women, you know, I was going to say, too, it's just, it's you see this a lot where girls or women use sex almost like a like a punishment. Yeah. A tool. Yeah. You know, as a way to communicate that she's angry at you or or, or something like with withholding sex. Yeah. Yeah. Take that to the Lord if you ever feel uh, you feel should... like you're 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 tempted to do that. You should, ladies shouldn't do that. Guys, you shouldn't, you shouldn't force yourself upon no. your partner either. It should be a mutual. If mu- something's going it, on. There should always be a mutual respect. Right. It should always be done in love. Right. It but if al- you're having issues and you're trying things and you just don't feel like, you know, it's just coming together, get a mentor. Yeah. Chase and I have two that we talk to. This yeah. is older couple that are from Africa and there are these wonderful Christian counselors, Christian counselors and are they're, it's a beautiful they've thing. shared, you know, I mean, even when things are good, you know what I mean? You don't need to go to a marriage counselor or, or get yourself some, just to kind of check in once a month, right. once, you know, maybe once every once three quarter, months, once you know, year, whatever, whatever, whatever like, you can do. But, you know, I mean, if, if you maybe communication isn't so great, Chase and I, that, that might not be, you know, your relationship, you know, but, and, and, and I don't know, I, I can only speak on my relationship, right. you know, with my husband, but, you know, if you need to get a counselor, you know, where the two of you can, you know, if you need, if you need to go alone for a while and, you know, eventually maybe your, you know, your spouse will come later on, but definitely do something like that because we, that, th- those were topics that we had talked about, um, you know, are you saying, you know, uh, what, what, how would, you know, what's the intimacy like, you know, in your marriage? And I remember Irene telling me at one point, she said, do you, do you pray before the both of you have sex? And I had never, and this was like several years ago, and I hadn't, I'd never, I'm like, no, you know, I mean, I just, well, what do you mean? She said, you should. And I said, what? Well, she said, because you're about to minister to each other with mm. your bodies. Mm. And I had thought of that, and I share, I remember share, being at a table, and we That's were having. That's very it was, it powerful, was, if you think about it. Well, and I was, I was thinking, um, you know, I had shared that with a bunch of ladies once, and they were like, "That's weird, Leah. Hold on, honey, let me pray real quick." I'm like, "Well, yeah, wouldn't well, you put it like that?" But I mean, you don't have to make it a big thing. It could just be a silent, you know, couple no, of, you know, no, you don't it, have to get at the edge of the bed or do what, or do whatever pray. you want. I mean, I think that's a beautiful thing. I mean, talk about yeah. deepening your 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 
your spiritual intimacy with one another. You pray together. You talk about godly you things together. You minister to each other with your body. You're healing what, one another. Yeah. From past trauma, from stress of the day, from just. Well, I think the Lord re- is is. He can be is, there. Is, in the he's a part of, of that. He's 100%. a part of even if you make him a part of even that. You know, talk about you know, like you were saying. Just this this supernatural boom, yeah, in in the whole thing, you know. I mean, it, it it is. I mean, the world, you know, has has made it this this ugly. Well, they've taken you know, they've taken thing, all the value a out of it. They life giving act. Yeah. The world you know? the world has made it such a frivolous, trivial thing that everybody just has to get because it's like a conquest thing or whatever. But they've it's taken like a drug to yeah, people. They and they they've taken away the power. Mm-hmm. And the and the and the and the magic, if you will, the intimacy, the the right. the beauty right. of right. the act, and made it just something that you can just go pay for online right. for five dollars a month or whatever. That's yeah. disgusting. Yeah. Well, and <sighs> yeah, but it's bondage. You know what I it, mean? It, it is. It is not, a bondage. It's not something. You know what I mean? And you have to wonder if so, if someone had to choose, do you really think that would be their 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 go to method? You no. know what I mean? But so. People find the way and they think, oh, all this money I'm getting or whatever attention. People but, are lonely. But you know? you're lonely at the end of the day. So um, I think that's pretty much all I had uh, for this episode. Okay. We could probably keep talking for another hour or so. But if uh, there, I got I got nothing else. Do you want to, any, any final thoughts of the matter? We've pretty much covered everything. Or do you yeah. want us to take us out in prayer? What do you yeah. want to do? Let's... Um... Yeah, I think we've we've tapped into stuff like that, and I think that I think that we did pretty good there. That was not a an explicit chat. It was no. very, you know. I think it's very wholesome, very yeah. edifying. Yeah, you, and, and you know, it. we can expand on some, but just for the sake of time and you know, keeping things simple, you know, and it's um, it's definitely um, you should be comfortable, you know, among among others to talk about stuff. But it is because it's you're, it's a very personal. Um, but everybody does it. Yeah, and everybody, everybody and it, but nobody's it, nobody nobody wants to talk about it because it's taboo or whatever. No, it's a it's a healthy integral part of everybody's life, mm-hmm. and society would not continue without it. <laughs> Let's just be real for a second. Mm-hmm. So, um, that's all we got, guys. Thank you for tuning. It's kind of a long episode, but it's something that's very important. It's a hundredth episode of the Three Pillars Podcast. I appreciate you guys being here. Uh, I'm Chase Tobin. This is Leah Tobin, my wife. She's just the most wonderful thing that's ever happened to me in my entire life, uh, besides Aww. being saved from. Uh, sin and damnation from our Lord yeah, and Savior amen. Jesus Christ. But, <laughs> amen to that. Uh, I will ask, Leah, if you would just uh, take us out with a quick word of prayer mm-hmm. and we will take everybody off to another phenomenal Absolutely. weekend. Thank you for being on, on there. I love you. Amen. Love you too. How about a marriage prayer? How about a marriage like, prayer? If you got one if you got one written out that you've yep. done, let's, let's do it. Lord, help us to remember when we first met and the strong love that grew between us to work that love into practical things so that nothing can divide us, Lord. We ask for words, both kind and loving, and for hearts always ready to ask forgiveness as well as to forgive. Lord Jesus, we put our marriage and the marriage of those listening to this podcast into your hands. In your most holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Guys, thank you much. For, thank you very much for tuning in to the 100th episode of the Three Pillars Podcast. It's been a pleasure this entire time. It's been therapeutic. It's been just a wonderful time. Uh, check us out on the Three Pillars Podcast website, Three Pillars Podcast at WordPress.com. Check us out on Good Pods. Check us out on Twitter, anywhere you can find us. Uh, and, and just join the conversation and help us to continue to grow and get this message out to the masses. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I'm Chase Tobin. This is the Three Pillars Podcast. Until next time, Tobinator, out. <laughs>